this video we're going to take a look at how we can enable Cisco AnyConnect users the ability to change their passwords for primary authentication when connecting to a remote access VPN where the dual authentication proxy is also configured for two-factor authentication and also Cisco ICE is being used as a radius server alongside Active Directory. Of course there is other radio service that can be used but this demonstration will demonstrate this with Cisco ICE because there's a few um, other considerations that we may need to take into consideration if this is a particular setup that you have as a customer. So this particular workflow that I'm showing on screen actually allows us the ability to be able to give users the option to reset their passwords if it's expired or re requires changing for whatever reason. The way we do this is uh, by actually configuring a couple of things on the ASA and where ICE is concerned we just need to make sure that the relevant settings are actually configured and by default they should be so unless they've actually been changed there shouldn't be much to do if anything on ICE. Now this particular video demonstration isn't going to focus on setting up any of the configuration for um, the ASA Remote Access VPN, uh, the Duo Proxy or Cisco ICE or any of the other components. This is purely just to show how we can actually enable and demonstrate that we can allow users the ability to change their passwords in line when connecting using Cisco AnyConnect to a remote access VPN solution. So if we just start off now with our ASDM and this is our ASA which is already configured and if we just click on here we can see that our authentication method at the moment is AAA and we have a AAA server group which is a duo of proxy which has been configured by myself and you can see here we've got one server in there uh, this is actually pointing at the moment to the duo of proxy and then we've configured within that the secret key that also needs to match our authentication and accounting ports as well as the timeout as well and what we also need to make sure that we've got uh, configured or enabled is Microsoft Chat V2 capable. So once you've configured this as you're seeing on screen you can just then select OK and assuming you've only got one server we can just kind of OK out of that and continue and you can either do that under the AAA local users section under the AAA server groups or you can simply do that under the connection profiles under the connection profile that's configured. Next what we need to do is double clicking on the connection profile that is in use we need to now select advanced and then we need to select general and then what we need to ensure that is turned on is under password management we need to ensure that this radio box here enable password management is enabled so we've got the little tick in there once you do that you'll get the option here to select one or two options either to notify users over X amount of days prior to password expiration or notify users on the day the password expires simply change that to what is relevant for your environment. We'll just leave this as default. So once you've done that, the ASA configuration in terms of what we need for the allowance of password changes should be complete. So you can go ahead now and apply that if you're using the ASDM. And now what we'll do is we'll just quickly before looking at the authentication proxy, we'll just open up Cisco ICE and we'll just take a look at some of the settings that we need to make sure are configured and by default should be configured as well. 
So because in our workflow we're using ICE as the radius server, so we're essentially going from the authentication proxy to ICE and then to Active Directory to validate the primary credentials. What we need to do is we need to ensure that uh, under the external identity sources, so administration, identity management and external identity sources, under your specific Active Directory that's configured, we just click on that and if we now head over to advanced settings we need to enable if not enabled and by default it should be enabled uh, we need to ensure that enable password change is selected once that's done we should be good with the ice configuration now if we go across to our authentication proxy and I'll just bring that over so you can see. Now this is the authentication proxy configuration uh, that's set up. Um, this is a demo account, hence the reason usernames and passwords are not encrypted and shown. Um, essentially what we have here is we have or the, the relevant components that we need rather um, is the radius client section where this is pointing to Cisco ICE. So what we have here is we have the host, we've got the secret that is configured between the authentication proxy and ICE. And then what we're doing as well is we're passing through um, all the attributes, all the, all the radius attributes as well. Under our duo um, radius server auto for our application, We've specified our identity key, secret key, and API hostname. These are required um, for communication between uh, the Duo admin panel or the Duo cloud and the authentication proxy. Our radius IP is that of the ASA. So this is the ASA where the AnyConnect users will terminate their VPN. And then we've got the radius secret, which is configured between uh, the authentication proxy and the ASA. Again, as I say, it's a lab environment, so we're not using super secure passwords here. Um, and then what we're doing is we're specifying as the client, we're specifying um, the uh, Cisco ICE as the uh, radius client. And we're using our um, 18, 12 UDP part. So in terms of configuration, that is all we need on uh, the authentication proxy. So you can go ahead and save that and then uh, stop and start the authentication proxy. And if it's configured right, you shouldn't get any errors output. So once that's done, we can actually verify this um, on the on ICE for starters, we can see what's going on on ICE. Obviously, we can have a look in terms of secondary factor authentication and what's happening there on uh, the duo side. Um, and we, more importantly, what we need to now verify is the uh, allowance to be able to change the passwords. So just before I do that, actually, what I'll do is I'll make sure our demo user is set up to change password next time they log in. So yeah, you can see demo one here, user must change password at next logon. So that's great, that's what we need. Now if we open our demo machine up, and we log in now. And we've now got our AnyConnect client here ready to go. This is the IP address of the ASA. So we'll just go ahead now and we'll press, uh, press connect. We can ignore the certificate warning as this is only a lab. And now the user is presented with the uh, username and password for primary authentication. So what we'll do is we'll put in our 
last known password and now you can see that we've been prompted to uh, create a new password as a password is expiring so what we'll do is we'll just create a new password and press continue and then we get our duo notification and then and I select that we now can connect and there you have it so we can establish now this VPN uh, connection to the SA and from the uh, I side uh, we've got a couple of logs here so if we just take a look at the the first one so we get one log here that's saying that um, password needs changing from the user so it's denied it um, but then what you can see here is um, permit access um, which is some default policies that I've created just to demonstrate that the user is then um, you know given access where where ICE is concerned as well and then if we just go back to that we can see that our VPN connection is established as well so that's simply how we can enable inline password resets where Cisco AnyConnect is used for remote access VPNs and Duo is also in play for two-factor authentication in line with Cisco ICE as well. Thank you for watching.